welcome to NPTEL. Myself, Dr. Joyanto Dash from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. Today, we will discuss on the various forms of nanomaterial. Specifically, we would like to know that what are the factors determine the shape of a nanomaterial means which factor decide whether it will be zero dimension particle or one dimension particle or two dimension particle or three dimension particle. There must be some scientific ground which determine the shape of the particle during processing. So, let us start today's discussion. You may recall that during last four classes, we have used that a 0 d particle, 0 dimension particle like if we consider a sphere in all x, y, z direction, they are basically all in, in less than 100 nanometer. So, this is a 0 d. So, a one dimension particle means here in x and y that is in nano means 1 to 100 nanometer hmm. in z it could be longer. So, here is z it could be few micrometer or it could be few millimeter. Okay. Now, among this nano tube or nano rod which are both one dimension a tube basically means like here the molecules or atoms are present and inside it is hollow. Whereas, rod means the atoms are also present. So, this is a solid like structure. Whereas, two dimension particles are the nano plate. Okay. Here, I have a plate like shape where the thickness is in the nano scale of 1 to 100 nanometer. Now, if you ask me to show some real life example, these are some zinc oxide nano rod. Okay. So, you can see here that these rods are present as one dimensional object. Also, during deposition technique, there is like bulb type of shape okay, in the front. You can see that. Now, in case of nano plate example, I show you here this is a gold nano plate. So, even though this size is little bit uh, larger greater than 100 nanometer, but the thickness here I am talking about the thickness of this particle is less than 50 nanometer. Okay. So, these are basically some nano plate. So, as I said now during processing gold nano particle is also can be processable or plate is also possible to synthesize. So, one should uh, know which are the factors that basically govern or determine the shape of the nano materials. Now, very basic and uh, at the very beginning, I would like to say that nano material means that higher amount of surface area. Okay. So, whatever energy you always consider in terms of thermodynamics, one should consider the surface energy term in that total energy. So, um, here if we consider that we are thinking about a non-spherical particle because let us say in one case I have a rod and another case I have a plate. Okay. So, these are definitely non-spherical particle and the unit of this particle I can think about like a Tetra, uh, tetragonal type of shape. So, one tetragonal shape I have shown you here. So, this is a, a tetragon. Okay. So, a tetragon means I have c axis which is longer and here I have a and here is also I have a. So, both the axis are the sides are a and I have c here. So, now for surface a I have a surface energy that is uh, that is the gamma a 
and gamma c is responsible for the c. Now, uh, this has to be a non cubic because you have introduced c as a tetragonal. Now, let us consider the total surface energy how much available for a single tetragonal shape. So, if this is the tetragonal shape uh, and then I have c here, I have a here uh, and then so, a into c which will take care of this area uh, and then I have the bottom part or the top part that is actually a square. Okay. Now, if we multiply it then I will get actually gamma c into a square. So, 1 and 2 and then other I have basically 4 planes which is a into c in the area and the surface energy are gamma a. Okay. In that a case if we uh, consider that a constant volume is maintained here then the constant volume the volume of this particular tetragonal shape particle that has a square into c because this is the area into multiplied by c. So, this is the volume typical volume. So, c basically means v by a square. Now, I am taking the same equation and putting actually or replacing actually c. So, I get 4 into gamma a into the volume divided by area into uh, plus 2 into gamma c by a square. Now, uh, I have basically two cases what I can do that I can take another tetragonal and put it on the top of this means a square plane this is the a square plane. Uh, I am putting it here. So, this is case A or I am taking this same one and putting it here. So, I have 2 in this side by side. So, this is let us say case B. Now, you can imagine that if I keep on putting this tetragon here and here then I will get a rod and if I put it in this side by side then I will get a plate. So, that is why we uh, have taken a anisotropic geometry a non cubic that is basically a tetragonal shape. Now, for case A let us say the, the gamma A um, that has the u of, of case A means I am joining only 2. What will happen? The same equation will come here. However, the area which is a and c multiplied means this is the area okay uh, there are basically here there is 4 and here is another 4 so in total it is 8 however one area that basically missing here uh, so i have only 2 of such gamma c into a square so here is the a square and bottom is the a square so this is the term here so, this is case A when we consider a rod. Now, let us consider a plate. If we consider case B as a plate, then you will see that I am basically taking the same equation and here instead of the 2 of this plane is missing, AC plane is missing because of joining. Uh, so, it will be basically 6 gamma A into AC. So, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 opposite side. Whereas, there will be 4 a square plane. Huh? So, this is why it is 4 a square. Now, um, uh, if we consider that the minimum surface energy condition here, um, let us say this is a, a term, we basically put the same term here then we make it as 0. So, under minimum surface energy condition of this volume of a, of a single uh, tetragonal shape we are talking about where the gamma a by gamma c has the same ratio as a by c. This is a this is a minimum surface energy condition, but now let us consider the case a and case b what will happen. Now, in case 
of case A means the rod when in case of a rod the rod becomes stable when this surface energy of basically um, uh, of a of a rod is is basically less than the surface energy of the plate. So, that is why this is the surface energy term of the plate and this is the surface energy term of the rod. In that case you will see that if both has the same terms whereas, the surface area has changed because of this two shape then gamma a into c by gamma c into a should be less than 1 or otherwise gamma a by gamma c is basically less than a by c. So, this is a condition that when the rod will be stable. So, means the surface energy along a direction and c direction is one of the important factor whether the plate will be stable or the rod will be stable with comparison of the a by c ratios. So, these two possibilities will tell which of the shape during synthesis the atoms will join and they will make either a rod shape or a plate shape. Now, uh, we can consider actually the layered structure and in that case of a layered structure, the layered structure can only be formed when we have some sheets ok. Means, atoms are making uh, and joining together on a specific plane. So, here I, I like to show you one of this plane and you can think about that atoms are sitting only in that plane ok. Hmm? atoms are sitting only in that plane and this is a same another plane, this is another plane, another plane. But one thing you may not have noticed if atoms are present here and atoms are present in the bulk, the bulk atom has a chance to join the bonds with its surroundings right. The atoms has a chance to join the bonds of its surrounding, but what about the, the atom which is very near to the surface? Hmm? or at the edges. So, here we have many of the bonds which are broken ok. So, they, those are called as dangling bonds. So, the, the dangling bonds has a very major role on the formation of the shape of a particle, but initially we can think about a independent lattice plane which appears like a layer like structures. Now, um, what we can do in order to minimize the energy of this system means I have some broken bond and I can simply join these two bond together so that they will make a tube that is possible in that case. So, nano rods and nano tubes is basically related with such kind of layer structures and with a let us say very uh, they hold together with a very weak van der Waal forces. But during synthesis the most effective way to avoid these kind of dangling bonds is simply curling these sheets means I am basically curling this sheet and making such kind of geometry. So, that the sheet will form a cylinder. So, this will be a cylinder type of shape and that will be a nanotube ok. Now, most of the uh, compound that crystallizes a layered structure definitely carbon is one of them and you already learned a layered structure in school level um, of carbon. Mm? We every day use it for writing that is the, the graphite right. So, graphite has a layered structure. Now, there are many um, uh, sulphides that is tungsten and molybdenum sulphide they act as a lubricant because of its layered structure yes. So, those are very 
very um, our uh, undergraduate level understanding. So, those since those, those material form a layered structure, uh, we can simply take and curl them to make uh, those, those sheet as a nanotube that is possible. Also, some selenides also make the same type of layered structure. So, layered structure is one of the very important aspect to form a nanotube by curling the sheets or the individual lattice planes. So, there are also other example like boron nitride as I said and these layered structure show a tendency to form nanotube and these are the example and carbon is one of the very important example of this, this uh, form. So, the binding the at the circumference of a layer are not saturated, these are not saturated bonds and this dangling bond has a strong tendency to saturate when we can curl this sheet in order to make the tube. Now, um, the condition for formation of such rod and plate uh, we can think about and also we can uh, think about let us say one dimensional uh, crystal, how it is? Yes. So, we can uh, start with let us say um, one point that I said that the ratio, right. The second point I said ratio means what ratio? The ratio means the here. This is one of the very important aspect to form the tube or plate and so on. So, this is one of the ratio of the axis and the surface energy term. This is one point important. The second is the layered structure. So, layered structure can be important. The third one is the one dimensional crystals. In one dimensional crystal, we have the possibility to obtain nanotube and to use the compound to crystallize in one dimension. So, here you can have a look, I uh, show you one example of a of a such a uh, such a uh, one dimensional crystal where this is a small tungsten uh, uh, sulphide particle. So, these are the very one dimensional crystal are present actually and uh, they are, these have very uh, few lattice planes actually. So, they brought together in order to saturate these uh, dangling bonds. Okay. So, they have some extra bond which is uh, at the surfaces and they are trying to join together at the circumference. So, one of the very good example of such one dimension crystal uh, from which we can start with to make a tube or a bigger structure. So, uh, these are called as allophones and these are short range ordered aluminosilicate. So, this is the alumina, silica, X and Y with the OH bonds actually H 2 O Y. So, with let us say 1 is to 3 to 2 where X is lying and Y lie within that 3 to 2.5 ratio. So, this is one of the very nice example to create this one dimension crystal and we can basically grow them together to get a nanotube. Now, Emogolite is also another example here you can see very similar that is also a other form of that uh, allophones actually Al2, Si, O3 and OH bonds are there. So, this is a typical uh, structure of that uh, emogolite. So, the internal uh, um, the, 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 uh, here these are the OH type of molecule and silicon is present okay, on the surface and then we have the oxygen, okay. oxygen is there and the aluminum the bigger one. And we can also uh, attach some, some functionalized group actually, uh, so some other OH or other kind of functionalized groups uh, with some nitrogen or some other things we can attach here. So, uh, this ratio of silicon and aluminum is used to adjust the tube diameter within the range of 1 to 2 nanometer. Okay. And the structure allows addition of other functionalized group at the surface of these particular uh, one dimensional crystals. So, this is another example how to prepare rod and plate from a very one dimensional crystal. Now, 
what is the use of it? Hmm? You can always ask. So, this emogolite, if you think about, then we may uh, try with a uncoated or let us say coated uh, that is polypropyl. So, the current and voltage if we apply the current uh, and it changes uh, means the uncoated one remain actually very simple and flat. So, there is no current basically passes, but if we coat it with some functionalized group actually then emogolite shows some conductive, um, conductive behavior. So, this is one of the very nice example of using one dimensional such a small uh, crystal for, uh, for conducting purpose. Now, uh, let us come to another uh, discussion topic on this nanomaterial that is called the layered structure to form nanotube and graphene. So, these are very advanced material and today almost you will find in most of the research laboratories they are doing research along this direction because they have unique properties. So, the question first come that what is really graphene means? So, graphenes are nothing, but it is basically the single layer of graphite means graphite had that layered structure. If I take out one of the layer, then we can call it as a graphene. Now, uh, this is a typical structure of graphite you may have seen earlier. So, we have this graphite layer where these are the carbon bonds, right. So, these are the carbon, uh, carbon and with the bonds. Now, carbon has basically four of these electron. So, one of the bond is basically the uh, unsaturated, the other one are the, are the saturated one. So, we have some, some excess electron is here and that become, um, become active and, and, and uh, delocalized in order to, to, to conduct uh, the electricity yes, the, or, or the current. right? So, that is why graphite is a conductive material because we have uh, a extra electron in the bond that is unsaturated. Hmm? Whereas, if you think about the, the between the layers, we have some uh, weak van der Waal forces that act actually. And in this direction, it is conductive, but this direction it is a insulator, yes. So, this is the typical property of the, of the graphite. And um, so, um, now we can, we can think about that a minimum free energy can be achieved by reducing the number of the dangling bonds that I told you earlier. And the example is like graphite and uh, uh, the some of the sulphide or selenides and so on. However, uh, what is important here that in case of a graphite, we have a unsaturated bond. So, the basic structure is shown here. So, this is a carbon, carbon, carbon. So, carbon has four electron, one of these bond is, uh, is, a, is a unsaturated bond. But if you think about boron and nitrogen means I am talking about boron nitride. Okay. So, in case of boron nitride actually, so all bonds are basically saturated. Okay. So, here there is no excess electron and this is a single bond actually. right? So, because of that the boron nitride cannot conduct uh, any electricity. Okay. So, this is like a, like a uh, non-conducting uh, material. Okay. So, um, in case of a graphene, which is a single layer of the uh, graphite, there are uh, three of the four valence uh, says of the carbon atoms that are uh, already saturated and there is a fourth electron that is delocalized and shows the electrical conductivity within the layer, but along this direction they are not conductive. Now, um, we can simply uh, take those uh, graphene layers and then we can make several structures okay? or let us say those layer of graphite we can simply take uh, which is has a hexagonal structure and then we can we can simply make some uh, uh, solid structure out of it. But the problem here is something else. Uh, you may recall the discussion on the structure of the solids and there we told that we can fill up the space using a regular hexagon in 2D, right, uh, like that. But uh, we cannot fill up a space in 3D, that is a problem. 
and so I need the help of a pentagon and put hexagon uh, along these five different directions so that I will have some empty space here which helps to make a make a sphere type of object ok. And that is why if you look at the fullerene which are one of the modification of the carbon in that case actually this is a C60 fullerene means I have basically 60 carbons which is making this fullerene structure I have a pentagon and here I have a hexagon here I have a hexagon here I have a hexagon I have a hexagon I have a hexagon. So, here you uh, basically see that that how many of these uh, uh, structures are possible. So, this is something very important and very bulky structure we call it as a uh, bucky ball structures ok. So, total there are 12 pentagons and 20 uh, hexagons are present here. So, all together it makes actually the C60 structure. However, um, but using only these um, five, um, five um, or pentagon structures, we can make a fluorine structure that is C20. So, there are 20 carbon atoms and this is a typical um, structure of C20 that you can see. However, it is rather unstable structure or maybe we can simply increase the number of carbon bonds and then here you see that there are some, um, um, uh, some of these uh, structure where uh, it is a mixture of the pentagon and hexagon. So, here I have two hexagon and then there is another pentagon and there is another hexagon. Whereas, in case of this bucky ball I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, this is the same as this one actually ok. So, you need some empty space so that you make this 3D object. And this bucky ball is not a new structure, but if you recall we have talk, uh, talked about this icosahedron and if I make a truncated icosahedron means I am cutting the corners, then I will get a mixture of this hexagon which is the same structure as this one. So, here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here also I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and inside I have a pentagon ok. So, this is the geometry and, and uh, of this uh, solid geometry of, of these uh, of these objects. So, we, which, we, which we can prepare. Now, uh, in case of a layer structure this fullerene may exhibit sometimes multiple layer means we have only talked about single layer ok that is the graphene, but we can also prepare multiple layers and then put them together. And so, here I have shown you in different color this multiple layer and I can make the tube. So, this is a multi wall carbon nanotube ok. So, there are many different structures such available. So, this is a multi layer. So, you can see this is a atomic layer transmission electron microscopic image that basically shows that uh, this is a multi layer nanotube. However, uh, we have covered it up. So, this is a, a, a in 3D it looks like that. Whereas, there are onion like crystal is also possible. So, fullerene uh, uh, has exhibit some multiple layer which could be a nested one or the onion type. Onion means like a onion on onion shells actually right. So, this is a onion shell structure that you can see or maybe simple uh, fullerene with, with multi uh, layer. So, this is a multi wall uh, type of fullerene which is also available for, for molybdenum dyes. Um, sulphide. This is a zirconium selenide type of structures. So, it is possible like a onion like structure or let us say multi wall structure. These are uh, some nanotube by wrapping some of the graphene layers with some limited uh, size to form the tube. However, um, if somebody asks to how to classify these nanotubes actually is there any difference or is there any change in the properties by changing its structure. Yes, it is possible. So, the possibilities lie here on the geometry of the graphene sheet. So, let us say I have taken a graphene sheet. So, this is a top layer uh, you can simply think about. So, here is like a like a honeycomb like structure. So, these are the carbon atom present. So, I can have two vector one is basically E 1 vector another one is E 2 vector ok. So, along this vector I have 0 0 point here this is 1 0 
2030, 40 and 50. Now the interesting part is that along E1 direction the bonds are like zigzag. Please have a look. This is a zigzag bond, right? Hmm? However, if we think about let us say along these E2 actually, so this bond uh, here this is 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03. Okay? And so uh, like uh, you may not be find in a in a different kind of bonds. So, the sheet along E1 and E2 vector any vector in this system can serve as a chirality vector and there are two special form one is leading to the zigzag type of structure another one looks like a armchair. Okay? So, armchair you can see like this kind of bonds. So, where we can get a armchair type of thing. So, this is just looks like a armchair. So, please have a look here I have shown you one that is the armchair type of bonds. However, if we just orient this structure then I will get a zigzag type. So, the orientation of this uh, graphene sheet with the axis of the tube is very much important. Okay? So, here this is also a graphene sheet with a chirality vector uh, which is shown here this is the tube axis okay? and this one is the E 1 vector and this is the E 2 vector. So, these are 1 0, 2 0, 3 0, 4 0, 5 0 and here it is 0 1, 0 2 and 0 3. So, we have these two vector and now if I take another vector here which is perpendicular to the to the tube axis here we get a 4 1. Okay? So, this chirality vector here is the 4 1 and I can simply see such a vector and then I can make this kind of structure where Mm, uh, this uh, shows a tube axis direction and the chirality vector in total is represented with this kind of c is equal to n e plus m e. Okay? So, which is the summation of this two vector. So, here this is the same chiral type of vector that you can see which is present here. So, this is a zigzag type of structure here it looks like arm type of structure and the chiral structure is present here. So, it basically says that even uh, between different nanotube with the same graphene layer the orientation of this graphene tube could be different and then we can make different different structures or different property can be changes. So, there are very widely used technique to synthesize this carbon nanotube often this carbon nanotube is represented as C and T. So, let us say there are um, uh, multiple wall or single wall A stands for single wall nanotube or let us say multiple wall nanotube. So, laser vaporization is one of the technique uh, to produce let us say 1 to 2 nanometer with let us say very few defect good size control, but it is a expensive technique. However, chemical vapor deposition is a very well known technique for a single wall or multi um, uh, type of uh, nanotube where the length can be very long and it is very easy to produce and let us say uh, usually it may contain some defects actually. So, with uh, such kind of unique opportunities in case of nanomaterial, we have seen that carbon itself can be present not only in terms of graphite, but we can produce fullerene, carbon nanotube and those kind of buckyball structure and so on. Those are important aspect because they have some unique properties. So, with this we finish nano material part 1 discussion, we will continue the discussion in the nano material part 2 regarding the properties of the nano material in next week. Thank you very much.